Hey guys, Windcraft here, and today we're taking a look at Sid Meier's Civilization V. This is going to be a Let's Play series, and we're just going to take a look at how the game works and how fun it is, and I'm pretty much going to play through all the different stages and, you know, show you guys along the way. So, with no further ado, let's get started. So, I'm going to choose a random civilization, um, I don't know, I don't have a favorite exa exactly, so I'm just going to go with a random civilization. Um, the Earth map, it seems pretty cool to me. I like the idea that you, you're pretty much playing on Earth, and so I'm gonna stick with that. Um, so originally the game, it sets you on small, I think. But, I don't know, I, I, I usually play on standard, so I'm gonna go ahead with that. So it's gonna be 8 players in 16 city-states. Um, difficulty, I don't have too much experience with the game yet, so I go with print, because it seems like a normal difficulty, so it's not too easy, I guess, apparently. But it's not too hard, either. So I'm gonna go with Prince and set the game pace to standard, and um, let's just see where we spawn, what civilization and stuff. Okay, so I just got Hiawatha of the Iroquois Empire. Leader of the mighty Iroquois nations, long have your people lived near the great and holy Lake Ontario, in the land that has come to be known as New York State in North America. In the mists of antiquity, the five peoples, Seneca, Onondaga, Mohawks, Cayuga, Noinida, United into one nation, the Haudenosaunee, the Iroquois. With no written language, the wise men of your nation created the great law of peace, the model for many constitutions, including that of the United States. For many years, your people battled great enemies, the Huron and the French and English invaders. Though outnumbered and facing weapons far advanced from the ones your warriors wielded, the Iroquois survived and prospered until they were finally overwhelmed by the mighty armies of the new United States. O oh, noble high one, listen to the cries of your people. They call out to you to lead them in peace and in war, to rebuild the great longhouse and unite the tribes once again. Will you accept this challenge, great leader? Will you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? Okay, so that was the introduction for Hiawatha of the Iroquois Empire. And uh, let's just look at the uh, special abilities this guy gets. So he has the Great Warpath. So units move through forest and jungle in friendly tority as if it's the road. So that's pretty useful. These tiles can be used to establish trace routes, okay? And my special units are the Mohawk Warrior, which um, looks like it replaces um, the Swordsman. And the Longhouse, which is just another building that will be probably useful. So uh, let's get started. So I'm not really sure where I spawn exactly, so I have a river and some forest around here. Remember, this is the Earth map, so it's going to be like somewhere on Earth exactly. So these are the settlers, these are the warriors. There's a lot of jungle here, so that should, that should be good for me. And um, you want to try to find a good place to start. And I'm not so sure if this is the best place, because this is pretty low land. Um, it's a marsh and a river. So I go up here, it's a forest, plains, and hills. And hills give you a lot of extra production and stuff like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and move my character over here, and I'm going to go ahead and get settled next turn. And I'm going to set this um, warrior to start getting start exploring. Looks like there's some marble over here. We've got ancient ruins here, a lot of jungles, some incense, and wine over there. Okay? You should found your city soon. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and find my city here, and it is gonna be, um, Onindaga. And warriors, you know, put them, explore them a little bit more. We found a city state already, so next turn I can probably go ahead and find out who that is. So choose a production. I'm gonna go ahead and just start with the scout because I wanna get the area familiar and stuff like that first. Research, um. I am probably going to go with mining, mainly because I don't see anything too close by in the two other civilizations. A lot of forests and stuff like that, and both my advisors are recommending me to do it. And in this game, you usually have a... the point of the game is to win it, obviously, right? And there's a couple ways to do that, and there's like diplomacy and, you know, war and all sorts of different things, so... I think I'm not going to decide that as of now. I'm going to go ahead and let that be determined depending on who I meet and what kind of resources I have and stuff like that. So we just met Warsaw. It's another city-state. First Empire, 30 gold. Culture and hostile. So that's not exactly too great because they're hostile. 
But, um, yeah. So, um, keep exploring, I guess, pretty much. Some gold, deer. Okay. Can't, it, it, um, the first couple games, they aren't too exciting, I would say. But it, it gets really fun when you get into later stages. If you, if you like this kind of game. Strategy games. So, some sheep over here. Well, city states are very important because they play a huge role in this game and they can pretty much change the entire course of the game because you're allowed to interact with them, but they are not in the game to win it. So, they play a major part in how you think and if other civilizations especially pair up with them and they can give you a lot of bonuses and stuff like that. So, they're, they're really useful. You want to kind of take care of them. But, yeah. In this game... It's it, it's perfectly possible to be like very like aggressive and win the game, but it's also I like it's also good to be you know diplomatic and actually be good nice people I guess. So because it pays off in the long run. So I just finished my scout. So I'm exploring. It looks like I'm down here. So I'm guessing. Actually, I'm not even gonna guess where I am. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but anyway, so, I am gonna go ahead and make a war, no, I'm gonna go ahead and make another scout, because I didn't want to explore it, like, really good, and apparently I found a ruin somewhere, and I probably missed it, but, let's see, no, it's pretty straight over there, or maybe I didn't miss it, it's right here, okay. Okay, so it fa in the ruins it found some great armor and stuff like that, and equipped itself. So now it's a spearman, which is a more advanced form, or not exactly a form, but. So I just met. I just met Alexander of Greece, and the animations in this game are actually really good. And I don't know if you noticed, but he he is speaking in his native language, which is Greek. And normally the character would move, and his horse would move, and the animation is really really awesome, but. My computer just can't handle it, unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and keep it like this. So, I just met Alexander, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say goodbye. I'm not gonna do anything yet, exactly. It, it's still 3600 BC, so. But not its mineral rights. So, I just discovered mining, so I can chop, I can construct mines, increase the production of map tiles, chop down forests, stuff like that. Um, just keep exploring pretty much. Another ruins. He's gonna probably get to it first, though. But anyway, there's another city state over here, so. And, uh, choose research. Uh, bronze working, I guess. Both of them are recommending to do that, too. I think mainly because there's a lot of jungle around here, and then being able to, like, make good improvements on it will help a lot. Let's go ahead and discover the city state over here. And is Kuala Lumpur. Again, the first empire, so I get 30 gold. They're cultured and hostile as well. But they have a lot of resources. They have a lot. So it might be good to be good neighbors to them. Let's go ahead and go this way. Um, Spearman. Oh, I guess I can get to here first. That's good. I met someone else too. Lord Elizabeth of England. We are pleased to meet you. So we met them, and again, the same animation thing, but unfortunately, I just can't use it. Um, 30 culture. So, another way to win this game is a cultural victory, I guess. And it's basically, um, I I'll show you in a while when I can explain it better. But, I'll show you when I'm better able to explain it. The game load. Okay, so, in the ruins, I found 30 culture. So what culture does is it allows you a lot policies and stuff to benefit your empire. So, there's a total of 10 different social policies, or branches of social policies. And you can't get all of them, but you can specialize in a couple of them, or you can just, like, broad, I guess. You can go as many as you can. But, these just improve your empire and stuff like that. So, tradition, these are the only three available right now. These go, um, these are unlockable later. Like this, it gets unlocked in the classical era, in the medieval era, Industrial, industrial, 
th that kind of thing. So as you progress later through the game, and you can do that, and you do that, you get that by producing culture and stuff. And that's another way to win the game. So I think it is if you complete three any three branches, and you can build the Utopia project. Oh, five policy branches apparently. Okay, so you can you can construct this project and you'll win the game by a cultural victory. So that's really good. And they give they actually give you good boosts and stuff too. So let's go ahead and look at them. So tradition, it's best for small empires and they improve the capital city. Um, liberty, rapid expansion, and honor. It's pretty much uh, basic military. So I am gonna go ahead and choose. I'm. Um, see, um, they have, like, these miniature things, right? So the, these are, like, branches and stuff. So they each, like, unlock stuff. So right now, I only have enough culture to unlock the entire branch. But next time, say, for example, I do tradition, I can, uh, and I want to build a wonder. So this will help me a lot. So plus 33 production when I'm building wonders. So, like, when the next, when I get the next culture amount, then I can just build one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and go with, um, I'm gonna go ahead and go with Tra- I'm gonna go ahead and Liberty, actually. I haven't tried Liberty, and it seems- Actually, no, it cannot be the same as Autocracy. So that means that Autocracy, just from the picture, you can tell that it's mi militaristic. So, I'm not entirely sure I don't want to go in that way. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and go with Honor, actually, because it seems gonna improve your combat bonus versus Barbarians and stuff like that, and it's not- and you get a lot of Barbarians, especially in the beginning, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. So I have honor, so I got 25% combat bonus versus barbarians, and I get notified whenever that new barbarian encampment is spawned. So that's pretty good. So I gotta move these guys. Um, over here. Some gold over there, okay. A lot of people, so I'm, he uh, oh, um, so Athens is probably somewhere over here, because that's where his units came from. England somewhere up north. And I'm yet to find something that's really, really close to me. So, somewhere over here, for example. So, um, yeah, let's keep exploring. And also, terrain counts for a lot of the game. So, depending on what terrain you're moving and what kind of, um, you know, environment you're passing through, it depends a lot. So, for example, this is a desert, so I can move the most possible units this unit can move. But, say, for example, I was in a forest, which this, which my spearman is. Now, he can only move one unit into this, but this is a tundra, so you can use two, two units. It can move two units, sorry. So, I'm going to go ahead and move that way, because I get the most. And this looks like I'm somewhere in the north now, because there is snow over here. So, let's see. So I've already got all that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and build a warrior, because I think I'm going to need some protection for my city. Especially my, since my spearman's like out exploring. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's just keep exploring these guys. Some incense again over here. So there's a desert, but... There's snow and icebergs and that kind of thing over there. So you gotta see, see, barbarian encampment in this car. That's an example of what, one of the things. Keep exploring. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to this guy for a second. I'll find him. There you go. Okay, so this is Cal. He just discovered a barbarian encampment, right? So they're pretty much, I guess, somewhat equal to you. I have the uh, honor, so I guess I'm like, you can probably beat them. They're not too hard to defeat, actually. But if you clear out their encampment, which is defeat the unit and put a unit onto their encampment, you usually get, like, a couple of um, boosts, I guess. So usually it's gold, but sometimes you get other stuff, I think, so. Yeah. Go ahead and play next turn. And also, another thing you need to know about the terrain, it's usually, if you want to make a city, it's usually best to put it next to a river, which I did not do here, which is okay, but it's usually best to put it next to a river because if an enemy is attacking across a river, it takes, I think they take like a damage, they take an amount of damage they do a penalty, I think it's like 50%, I think. It's significant, so that helps a lot. So if you can find a place where you're on a hill and you're, there's like rivers near you, and you're on a really good place defending. So this, that kind of stuff depends a lot. 
Oh, I've just met Catherine of Russia. Okay, there you go. Talking in Russian, of course, animations again. But yeah. So I haven't. I didn't see her unit. There you go. Okay. So. Would you be interested in a trade agreement with England? Okay, so I just met Catherine, and then England automatically sings the problem to so form a pact of secrecy. Um, I'm not really interested at this moment because I don't want to get into anything like that at this moment. But I don't want to like automatically rule them out because yeah. And I'm not gonna go ahead and attack this because actually, minor defeat, minor defeat, yeah. Oh, major if they're actually so I'm not gonna go ahead and attack it because yeah oh I just realized where I was okay so I am in Asia and this is India I think and this is Thailand Laos places like that okay I, I know where I am now so this is the earth map remember so okay that makes more sense and Russian warrior there are two okay I that is England I think I believe Okay, so nothing really here, so I guess across the river again. Okay, and let's just unveil London. There you go, okay, that's London. Um, nothing up here? Maybe. Okay. So, this is how the beginning of the game is. I guess it isn't too specifically, like, that fun and interesting, but... It gets really fun, and if you like these types of games especially, it's really good. Another city shade over there. And this is pretty much the basics. Of the, actually, not even, I, I can't really say that. There's, there's so much to the game, so it's, it's a lot of fun. But this is pretty much how the entire starting goes. And then later, you'll realize like the decisions you make actually, like they might change a lot depending on what happens in the world and stuff like that. Because the AIs in this, they're actually quite s smart. I mean, compared to other AIs, they're quite smart. I'll say that. So, depending on what how you react and what your actions and stuff like that, they do other they they base their actions on that. So, if you like, if they're asking you to go to war with them, for example, against another um, place, I guess another like, um, uh, what do you call it, like city or something, for example, then if you keep saying no like all the time, they start to lose like faith in you, I guess. But if you trade with them a lot, you make a lot of agreements, you help them out when they're in need they get like a lot of faith in you and they help you out a lot and they become like good allies with you and the same thing goes with city states and I'll probably introduce that later but you'll find out that city states you actually gain influence is one of the things so let's take Warsaw for example so you take influence right now I'm neutral with them because I haven't really done anything to help them or hurt them but if I keep helping them my influence will go up it'll go up to friends and then I think the only thing you get from friends really is ability to pass through their borders and then once you get to allies, which is after that, they start giving you the resources and stuff like that. And since this place is cultured, they give you um, rare works of art, which basically increases your culture a lot per turn. So that helps a lot. But you can also do the opposite. You can also go down the scale and get angry or war with them. So for example, if I'm an ally of Warsaw and England decides to go to war with Warsaw, uh, with war with me, sorry, then Warsaw would probably wage war against uh, England as well because they are an ally of me and they're angry at England now. So that's basically how it works. So you gotta choose your decisions wisely and stuff like that. Another tundra over here. Okay. Beginning of the game, you spend a lot of time exploring and getting, just finding everything. And then so you slowly want to start expanding and getting a lot of stuff done. So, so I just discovered bronze working, and it basically allows me to chop jungles and put improvements on jungle tiles and stuff like that, really. Um, yeah, so another research I can choose. Um, let's choose iron work. Whoa, I mean, that's actually pretty fast if I can reveal iron already, but that's kind of 
way ahead, and it's 28 turns, it's going to take forever. So I'm going to go with the animal heads injury, because it reveals horses, and if anyone decides to try to, like, a pa pull a fast one on me and, like, attack me for some reason all the time, then horses are good units. They're, they're like, really good for attacking, especially in the basics. They can build a lot of units, like horsemen and chariot archers and stuff like that. So they're definitely good to, ha to have the technology with you, especially when ironworking is so far away. So, yeah. And this is pretty much the basics of the game. And I think I'm going to go ahead and end off the episode pretty soon. And hopefully I can get a couple more episodes in pretty soon, too, for you guys to all check out. Another barbarian encampment discovered. So, there you go. Some more barbarians over there, too. Enemy unit, you. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this for next time. I'm gonna go ahead and end off the episode now. So you guys have basically seen how the basics of the games are, and that's pretty much it. You guys might thinking, eh, it's not that great of a game, but it actually is. It's really fun. You just have to get into it, and after a couple of turns, is okay. I'm still on turn 24, and I'm in 3000 BC. So technology isn't that far in this really yet. So. But it's a lot of fun, and in my later episodes, you can probably see that and check it out. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching, and it's been the first episode of Sid Meier's Civilization V Let's Play. Uh, thank you.